and you'll see the little live thing in the okay. corner there. Yep, and we're on. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. We're a little late today. We had some technical difficulties with, with Zoom, um, but here we are, and I'm really excited to have today's conversation with you guys. We're all gearing up. You know, I know we've got some depth harvest coming in on the supply chain, and our season's kind of just starting. And I know in my, my product development packaging has been a big hurdle. And today we get to talk to one of our packaging mavens of Hippo Packaging, Carrie Radstock. Hello, Carrie. Welcome. Hello, Lele. How are you? I'm so happy to be here with you today. How fun. Oh, I, it's so nice to see your joyful face and all this, <laughs> all this disruption going on in the world. I know. I'm it doing has well. Been crazy. Yeah, you great. Know, living in humble is um, it's the re this is the reason my mom moved here. It really is a great place to be right now because of community, you know, our environment. There's just so many reasons. So I'm doing really good. It's not easy, but I'm doing good. How are I'm you? I'm so doing? glad to hear it. I'm doing well. I'm in San Diego, California, so it's a beautiful, beautiful place, and I've been able to get up to Humboldt a couple of times and. Man, what that is just God's country, you know. I mean, it is amazing, amazing, amazing place. So you, we're both in a pretty, you know, pretty special places. So I feel fortunate for that. You're in my place of birth. That's where my family lives. My dad lives in San Diego. Ah, well, it's a great place. I, once I moved here, I just didn't want to move out, you know, because it's just it. It's my it's my kind of place. I've been here seven years now. Ooh, nice. Yeah. 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 It's it's one of my favorite cities too. Yeah. Um, and, and how is COVID for you? What what is COVID like for you? Well, I mean, you know, COVID it's COVID in business is different than COVID in personal life, you know, because um uh I'm I'm Carrie, for those of you who don't know me, I'm from Hippo Premium Packaging. I started a packaging company about four years ago. And we have always been a remote company, so the whole lockdown and all of that, we were already, we were already there. We were already set up, so the, the disruption was minimal from a, a business standpoint, except for in our supply chain. Um, you know what was what was interesting about um, COVID um, is that right when it hit, um, you know India was shut down, China was shut down, and we are a global company and we rely on offshore suppliers. And so that that disruption really hit us pretty hard because we probably lost maybe $300,000 worth of work overnight. And then the business community itself kind of took a pause. Everybody had to look around and say, hey, are we gonna survive this? What's gonna happen? All projects kind of went on hold just so we could see what what is the impact of COVID. So that that happened. Um, however, the industry itself was proven essential and recession proof. And so now investors are starting to come back into the industry and things have picked up and it is very, very busy. So our, our industry is roaring back. There's a silver lining for us through COVID and COVID's a terrible, terrible thing. Um, but in terms of our industry, our industry is probably uh, ha has been less impacted than than others for sure. On a personal level, I miss I miss going to restaurants. I miss my friends. I miss you know hanging out. I miss concerts. You know all of those things. But you know I'm getting through, and we're all getting through. We're all learning through this this process. Yeah, it's been a great learning opportunity and for us to kind of rethink how we're building forward in this industry, you know, and, and I, I see a lot more collaborative efforts, a lot more um, real foundation building, you know. I, I agree with that. What, that's what I'm seeing too. A lot of kind of mergers and acquisitions or strategic partnerships forming, taking companies that are good companies and making them stronger. I mean, it's really making us take a, a close look at ourselves uh, as, as an industry and each of us individually in, in our founders of companies are, okay, where do I need to pivot? What does the future look like? How does this impact me? Where can I be stronger? So 
everyone has had to take a look at themselves and their business plans and, and really modify them to become stronger. It's, it's kind of happening in mainstream as well. You know, it's, it's the, the businesses that were a little rocky are even rockier and those that are strong are getting stronger. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a bit of an accelerator, this COVID virus. Yeah, I, I see a lot of opportunity for the culture up here because we have such strong foundations um, and, and we're still pushing through. So I, I get excited for, 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 for the people who built with, with good care. I guess if it was a person, I would say that they had strong character. You need yes. a lot of character to get through right now. You do. So Absolutely. How, yeah. How, how, did you, how did you come to cannabis? What is your story around oh, that? <laughs> well, and this one's kind of funny because I, I actually, I probably shouldn't admit this, but I, was, I smoked weed with my dad as a youngster, as a teenager, way back in the day. And we smoked a little bit of it, but then I was a a straight A student through school. So I didn't really until high school, I kind of got back into it and through college. And I was a straight A student in college smoking every morning on the way in and I smoked all, all day. And so I, I smoked for a number of years. I loved cannabis, especially for women's periods and pain management and all that type of thing. You know, I, I really enjoyed cannabis. And then I met my husband who was, a, 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 he's a psychoanalyst, uh, but he was a shrink and he, he did his dissertation on uh, addictions. And he just did not really like the whole cannabis thing. And so I had to really give up cannabis for about 20 years. And I, I went through a corporate, kind of I went through my corporate time and, and I didn't have cannabis in my life for about 23, 25 years. And, and then I started coming back to it. I went through a divorce and part of my breakup, <laughs> you know what? I smoked pot once in a while at a family reunion and I could tell my dad, but I can't tell you. And I was just mad as hell, you know, because I felt so, I felt restricted in a way that I, I couldn't be. And uh, so that was part of why, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I left not for cannabis, but that was one of those reasons. And so when I went through my divorce, I moved to San Diego and started a new life and started a new job. And it, it, it was, it was a, a, quite a, a beautiful time for me. And I was I'm learning about myself. So I decided I wanted to fulfill one of my fantasies is going to Burning Man. And so in 2015, I went to Burning Man and I had been looking into the cannabis industry the entire time. And one of the, my girlfriends that I was hanging out with at Burning Man, she, she said to me afterwards, she goes, all you could talk about is you're going to get out of here and go start a weed business, uh, packaging <laughs> weed. And I'm like, that's all I talk about at Burning Man? And she's like, yes, that's all you talked about. But the, the important part about Burning Man for me is, it, 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 and what happened in that, that experience is they, they say with Burning Man, you know, you, you get what you need. And, um, and, and Burning Man gives you what you need. And I went into it going, oh, I don't even know what I need. And oh my goodness, what does this mean? You know, how is this going to go for me? And I, I went to Burning Man and I had this amazing experience. It was a very tough experience because the wind storms were just brutal. But, but I had this, this epiphany where I realized that I was relying on men to do jobs I could do myself. For example, I had a camper. I was the only one in the team that had a camper. And I, I had a generator. And we had a whole bunch of boys in this camp. And I'm like, go light the generator. Or go, you know, you got to do your man job. And then I realized I was doing that. And I'm like, I know how to start my own generator. I'm not going to do that anymore. I realized I was relying on people to do things that I could do myself, which made me feel, once I realized that, I felt like I could do anything. And I came back and I started my own company because I thought, I can really do this. I don't need to rely on, on everyone else, although I built a great team. I mean, I couldn't have done it without the team, but I had to have that initial belief in myself that I, I didn't have prior to going to Burning Man, and prior to that epiphany. So for me, it was a really important step. 
Wow, that that is, and, and what a freeing feeling too, right? Mm -hmm. Get past that hurdle. I think that's mm -hmm. a lot about what COVID is about for people, for communities, for individuals. I was reading this article um, about a a uh, apartment building and how they had basically had built their own ecosystem, you know. Um, and I think that that I love that. Isn't that cool? That feeling of self reliance is. Mm -hmm is freedom that's freedom and power i mean you empower yourself when you don't rely on other people you know when you know that you can achieve that's that's an empowerment and yeah. uh sometimes we don't take the time to think about that and you know it's it, your mind is a powerful powerful um organ so and as a woman, I mean, I think the younger generations, you know, the, what are they, the Z gens and all that don't necessarily feel this way. They're more empowered. Um, mm -hmm. But I know for, for our generation, it was really like, okay, to be a really amazing woman, you had to be with a really amazing man. You know, you, you, you just, that was just part of the equation. And, and yeah, that's part of it. But we can do it on our own too, you know, we, we can, um, we need to, the world needs us to desperately, I feel like, to really understand our own magic right now. Um, so what were you doing prior to the packaging company as far as industry-wise? Well, I, I actually came from Fortune 500 company, um, a packaging and printing company. So basically I've been doing, <laughs> I've been doing what I've been doing my whole career, a long, long time. And when I, when I thought about packaging in the cannabis industry, I realized how I, I started looking at it. And I, I, I thought, you know, these, this community really needs help. I'm, I'm looking at the packaging. It's kind of, it's okay, or it's not really very well done, but they're spending money on it. And with a, with a little help, that money could, could serve them better. Their packaging could serve them better. And uh, so I, I came from the industry and, and I thought to myself, I'm just going to, you know, take best practices from mainstream for packaging and, and apply them to the cannabis industry. And I got my butt handed to me over and over again because I, I came from a place where I was Fortune 500. So I worked with Fortune 500 companies and those budgets. And, you know, if, if, if a company wasn't buying $2 million worth of packaging or printing, I, I probably wouldn't waste my time with them, and because I, they, you, you have to justify the time you spend. Um, it's got to create income for you, right. and so um, it was. It was quite a, a, a shock for me to come into uh, a business with all small businesses, an industry with mostly small businesses. Even at that time, the biggest cannabis com companies were about 300 employees. And those were big cannabis companies. So the, the challenges for small business are much different than the challenges for large business. And so to navigate that, 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 that has been, um, that has been a, 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 a bit of a challenge. But basically, I, I, was, uh, I quit my job just um, two months shy of my 20 year anniversary with a Fortune 500 company. And I had been looking at cannabis for about six months at that time. And I knew I wanted to come into this industry I knew I wanted to package for this industry. And so I, um, I, I, I was kind of looking at creating something within that framework of my Fortune 500 company. I said, we need to build a tool to service this industry. And they're like, yeah, go ahead. Let's look into it. And then once we got closer, the, the corporation said, we cannot handle cannabis companies. We've got to deny working with cannabis companies. And it wasn't a moral issue. It was a cash issue. They could not work in a cash system. And, and so they basically said, Carrie, we want you to move back to mainstream. I'd spent six months researching the industry. I went to Burning Man saying, I'm going to be doing this. And I'm like, I can't do that. I just can't do that. This is my path. I could feel it. I went to MJ BizCon in 2015 to check out the industry to see if we wanted to, to come into this industry. And as soon as I walked in, as soon as I walked the floor, I could feel it in my heart. This is where I belong. I felt this wonderful, warm feeling of this is where you're supposed to be. 
And, uh, and so I, I decided I quit my job two months shy of my 20 year anniversary on February 29th, 2016 and started Hippo the very next day, full time, March 1st, 2016. I started it on my own, just me, I was doing everything. And, um, and I went to a 420 event where I met um, the High Times editorial staff, some wonderful people who I to this day still love and respect. And, um, and, and Elise McDonough, I don't know if you know her, she was the uh, editor, editor and a great writer and cookbook article uh, writer and all of that. But she asked me to review the packaging of the nation, the nation, you know, the nation's best cannabis packaging for, for a feature article. So I, I got to collaborate with her on that. And that kind of gave us some trust and, and gave us a, a leg up, you know, just to be a respected resource in the industry back then. And, and it really helped put us on our way. And, um, and it's, I, I, you know, we've just had to start hiring and, and because, you know, and everywhere we went, people go, oh, we desperately need help, you know, and it, but it's been a, a challenge to help everyone because the industry itself was so young. There weren't very, then the regulations came in and now child resistant packaging and there were few options out there and they're all, mostly small businesses with small budgets and what can you do? How can you help? And, and you know, you feel helpless and, and you want to help. I mean, it's been, it's been quite a journey, but we're getting there and um, the industry is growing up and we have been working on something for the last, um, I, I've been the reason I'm, I've been driven into this industry is to bring a solution to help the smaller businesses, which we're developing. We're finally developing now, and um, we'll be launching that on our fifth anniversary next um, spring. So I'm excited. Oh, fantastic! Well, I appreciate the help that you've given me. Um, you know, we're trying to find an, uh, it's a, apparently an impossible item. <laughs> it, it, I, yeah, it is turning out to be, it, it's one that doesn't exist and it, it would be possible, but then you, you know, when, when you're looking for something super specific in packaging, you have to have, if you're going to develop it, you've got cooling and you've got this, and it probably doesn't make sense if, unless you do maybe 250,000 units and then your cooling is. Twenty thousand dollars and this and that and so there's these hurdles in packaging that and and there's just not existing you know so many things don't exist yet but but they what the good thing is is people are developing them at a really fast pace and there's some some beautiful uh, child resistant packaging on Nice, nice. Can you do cooperative orders? You know, when I was a kid, that's how the co-op started is we would get together and order a big, you know, bag of flour in the community and we would, so it would be, we could get that volume. Is that something that you work with? Yeah, absolutely. But you, you'd have to, you know, like for your particular, like Lele, you're, you're looking for something super tiny and, and, you know, very specific. And it's the first time I've ever heard anybody need that, you know, so you, we don't have this whole bunch of people that need it. Like we don't have 20 people that need it that could all go in on it, you know, but if, if, if somebody did come to us and say, you know, and we're, we are always trying to, we say, okay, we've got a big order coming in from China. We'd like to fill the container. Let's make it, let's make it or whatever, or from, from Germany, we're getting some beautiful flower glass jars from Germany that I'm really excited about. Um, and some, you know, America doesn't make glass very well. We're just, it's just not one of the things that we do well. Um, so other countries, we rely on other countries for, for those types of products. So well, I uh, you, we definitely can. Yeah. Cool, because I could see a lot of like small communities, farming communities coming together and doing packaging orders that way. Yeah, and and uh, and and we are working out more smaller, you know, because we don't want everybody to have to team up every time. We need right. to bring a solution for people who don't want to have to go through the work of trying to find a bunch of people to get together. We've got to. Let's bring everything in that is going to give you, you know, give people kind of what they need to build their business. And then once they get to a point where they can do custom or they can do larger or, or fancier things, then, you know, they build up to it, you know, but we've got to give them the, the, the tools they need um, in the beginning, you yeah. know, for the, when they're just starting out. 
yeah, that's wonderful because access all the way around is a problem, right? And and I think finding successful solutions to that will help build a better business because you, you, you're creating more access. Well, what's hard about packaging is like, this is this, the way it goes. It's kind of, it's, it's a terrible process. That's what it is. So say you want a flower, you want to package flour. First, you find your container, wherever your jar, or say you're going to get a jar. You find it, you're like, I want to make sure I like this jar. So you have to order a sample. Then you get your sample and then you're like, okay, I like this. I need a label for the top and the side. Now you've got to take it to a label person and say, can you measure me a label? And then you've got to get it designed. And then say you want a box to go with it. Now you've got to send all that to a, the box maker. And there are three different people that you've got to work with just to get a flower jar out there. And it's, and it's back and forth. You've got to send this here, get a sample there, do this, do that. The process is very difficult and time consuming. And most people just don't want to have to do it. You know, they just, they, it, it's just difficult. Yeah, I, I can identify with that. <laughs> I know what I want it to look like. <laughs> I know what and I want it to do. <laughs> yes, I mean, but it is, it's so difficult. So that's what we're, uh, we're really excited about because I came into this industry, you know, we had, I was sitting up in this plant in Vista, California and five different guys, they were all guys, walked into our business um, and nobody walked into a packaging or printing company anymore because then nobody wanted printing. And so all of a sudden we got all these people walking in with a baked cartridge and I'm like, oh my God, everybody needs packaging for certain products. We need to kind of put a, a program together to make it easier because it's, it's maddening. The, the, the process is just maddening right now. Oh, well, I'm excited. I can kind of visualize a little bit of, I can kind of, See a little I can't bit. wait to tell you more. I'll get a little further on, and then I'll stop, let you come. Stop. We don't want to give your secrets away until yeah. <laughs> you're ready. Um, well, let's talk about you. Men, you you've mentioned a few times that you've been in situations where you feel like it's been a very male-dominated thing, and in, in overcoming. Um, you know, a woman. This is a male-dominated in, industry. I really wonder, though, if we could see everyone, if it is a male-dominated industry. I know a lot of women that hold the farm down, you know? Um, so I, I'm a, I always question that. But it is a very masculine-dominated <laughs> industry. Um, you know, what are, what, what are some of the things that you've had to overcome and in that, in, in that, in, and what are some of the tools that you've managed because you have started your own company it is building forward successfully and growing i mean and you're working directly with a lot of products so you're working directly with a lot of guys in the industry yeah what well, I'll tell you my story um, I, I i'll start when i was a kid i was i was really raised by my dad and i had four brothers and i so i was the girl and I was, I was like the only girl. And I was just like, uh, I, I, I kind of, my dad, I, I was the smartest one of the group. And my dad didn't let me, didn't let, let a day go by without reminding me of that, you know, cause I was the smart one. I was the one that got straight A's in class. I was the one that got everybody ready. I was the one that did so much. So I felt like I was kind of like a guy, but with superpowers. So I came into this, kind of feeling like, you know, I was really stronger than most men, you know, not physically, but I, I had, I had the skills that, that maybe they didn't because I just had, that was my experience growing up. So I always felt pretty empowered. And then I went into, you know, the uh, print and packaging industry, which is probably 90% male. And, and I felt very comfortable because I was used to being around a lot of males. And I was always really successful. And, uh, and, and I always, just because I worked really hard. I mean, I didn't make a bazillion dollars like some people did, but I worked really hard and I was one of the top producers and da 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 da. And, um, and, and there was a time in my career and I, I feel like I have been uplifted by the men that I have been fortunate enough to work with. And I have been, you know, given opportunities. And so for me, I, but I kind of came into it thinking that I was pretty hot. <laughs> you know, I was pretty good. I was, 
ow, you're just because you're a boy doesn't mean anything. You know, you can beat me in an arm wrestle, but that's about, you know, that that may be, you know, there there are things that women bring to the table and things that men bring to the table. And uh, so once I was in, I was in this packaging company or, or printing, printing packaging, one of my favorite bosses that I've ever had. And I, I love him to this day. His name's Luke. And, uh, but he, he was giving all the leads that were coming in to everybody but me. And most of them were boys because there's everybody but me. I didn't feel like it's a man thing, but I'm like, why am I not getting the lead? Why are you giving them to everyone else? Am I not a fit in this organization? What, what's going on? And he basically, we had a heart to heart and he said, I'm not giving them to you because you're so good. You don't need them. You're the only one that doesn't need them. You're working so hard. You're getting your own leads. These guys need help. They don't even, um, they, they can't even. So once I saw the reason why I didn't like it, but I started getting leads. I'm like, well, that's not fair to me to be penalized because I'm a hard worker, <laughs> you know? And so we, we were able to work through that. But, you know, from, from my perspective, I, I feel like, and I still, most of my suppliers are men, you know, I, I'm comfortable in that because that's what I've done, what I'm doing. Scoot oh over, God. scoot over a little, there you go. Is that it? Okay, I told you I got my heaven. Yeah, but I've been doing this my whole life. I, I was, you know, I'm comfortable with men and I've been working with them my whole life. You know what I, I hear, Carrie, in your story, and this is something that I've experienced myself and, and am just integrating in the past couple of years, um, but a lot of the hurdles that I came across with men in particular were were, I mean, sure, they have their personality tendencies, you know, I mean, I have a lot of amazing brothers around me that have just, you know, brothers in the industry that ride or die, you know, they're just amazing men. Um, but I've also experienced the other side of it. However, what I've determined in those situations, and he, this is something I think that you've had your whole life that I didn't have, is understanding my value right? And coming to the table going, exactly. hey, man. You what? just gave me chills because that's, if that's one thing we can give to other women is don't, don't sell yourself short. We have so much to give, um, not only in this industry and in corporate America. You know, we, I, 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 I was on this seminar with some other very bright women about how women lead differently and why it's actually good you know there's different and 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 it's different than the way men lead but what what are the strengths of that so we can actually really understand it and understand our value and and actually you know you know recognize it and quantify it yeah yeah it, it's been a big lesson for me is it's been a balance of feeling like oh you're being like your ego on the table versus no, this is what I can do. This is what I'm capable of. And this is what it's worth, you know? And I feel like, you know, you don't even have to talk too loud. You, you show by your actions. You know, I, I have this quiet kind of, I just know that I'm strong and I'm, you know, I, I, it doesn't even occur to me to, to be aggressive or I like being a woman. I, I do like being a woman. I like all, I, I like th that, that I'm, I'm different than men. I'm, I'm softer. I'm probably more empathic. Maybe, you know, I'm, I know I'm stereotyping, which is not cool, but, but, but women are typically, um, you know, they're, they, they might think a little bit more. They might be more reflective. They're not as quick to act. Um, and, but I, I do feel I've been very lucky because of my history that I've, I've been able to navigate as well as I have through, through my career. So right now we're watching a lot of oppression around the world being unveiled, right? We're, we're, we're taking notice of, you know, people of color, of women, we're, of our healthcare systems, of our government. We're kind of putting everybody on a, what's the word? We're, 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 we're taking a look right now. You know, COVID has kind of given everyone space. How can, as women who do feel strong and empowered, how can we, what can we do to share that experience? So, because obviously a lot of women don't have that experience, right? I mean, there's, we have the Me Too movement. There's just so many, my, my personal journey is fairly horrific around what men can do to women. Um, we, we do have an imbalance, but 
part of that imbalance is as women, how do we engage, right? And so what, what kind of words of wisdom could you give to share coming from that place of strength to help, you know, other women rise up? Well, I, I feel like it, women, I was on a, I was on a, an NCIA uh, meeting. Uh, I'm on the marketing and advertising committee meeting. And, and one of the women shared a story and she's an Indian woman. And she, and I, I nearly, I cried listening to her story about how she was, you know, during 9-11, how people kept calling her, you know, uh, terrible names and saying, go back home and we don't need you. And she was born in this country, you know, this happens to be a woman who's an Indian. And, and I know racism is there and it's horrible. And we, you know, and, and I, I, I went back and forth with her because I, I also have been, you know, as a kid, you know, when she was a kid, she was made fun of and, and criticized and told to go home. And, and I was a little different. I had a deformity uh, on my, my fingers. And so growing up, I was also ridiculed as a child. And it was because I was different. And uh, it was because I didn't, I didn't fit the mold of this perfect little child or whatever. And, and I was, I felt horrible and, and really bad about this part of me and, and I hid it. And, and, um, and when I heard her story, it, it kind of brought it back for me. And I, I wrote to her and I said, you know, I, I, I'm so glad you shared and, 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 but, and I too have been through this. And I said, I, it, it's, it's, strange to me how people don't see other people who are different as as unique and wonderful creatures rather than something to to, to throw uh, you know pot shots at so i said it's our differences that make us so special and uh, it's it's a, it's a shame that you know children uh, uh, you know don't don't really recognize that but also you know and then they grow up to be adults and 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 they are are somehow not in, in, in a place of recognizing how special and, and how global our, our country, our, our, our world is and how important it is for all, all of us to come together. I mean, I, I cannot stand the, the fact that our, our black community has been targeted for marijuana crimes and they're in jail for possession for 10, 20 years when, of a product that is deemed essential. You know, and 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 it and it came about as a, a racist thing to put this community. I mean, it's terrible what's it's happened, and it has to that. be fixed. It absolutely has to be fixed. And I still, I still go back to Martin Luther King, who I love and adore. Who, you know, his his and and I'm paraphrasing. Of course, I don't know it exactly right, but to be judged by your character rather than the color of your skin. And that should be all of us, and that applies to, not only to black people, but to women. If you want to be seen as a professional, as, a, as someone who's really giving a lot, then do a lot and be that person. You know, you, you, you've got to show up every day to, to create a, a, a reputation for yourself. So, I, I don't know if that answers. That was a long-winded. That's okay. That's okay. No, I. Oh, you're smoking it, so like I'm gonna do it too. Yeah. No. No. I know. I started all this talk of disabilities. You know, being a disabled person and a, and a woman, um, I understand what, what what you're talking about. Um, but I do think with the cannabis industry that we have a great opportunity because it was built. You know, illegal, legally. Prohibition was completely built on racism, um, which means yep. that we can help shift that tide in a big way by working with all oppressed parties in this conversation and coming together, I think, under one voice really strongly. Um, I'm excited for that. Absolutely. I, I hope it comes sooner than later. Um, you know, what about, let's talk about valuing yourself a little bit, because I think that that's, you know, right now it's really hard. A lot of people can't necessarily go to work and do all the things that they, they, they're, you're told are right. You know, you can't do the things that make you feel like you're good um, because we don't, we're not able to go out and have lunch with our friends. You know, we're not able to go do all these things. 
Um, what are some of the key traits or key tools that you feel you can share that really helps you um, come to that table with, with that knowing and value in yourself and so strong? I mean, because that is, when I met you in cannabis, it was very interesting um, because you were, you were so just bright and bubbly and in your game and you, no, nothing around you was impacting you. It was like <laughs> scary space. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet of you to say. I, it didn't, I, I was impacted uh, regularly and I, I've learned so much. I mean, I'm a first time entrepreneur, so, but I came from corporate America. So I kind of built my company like a mini corporate America so we could scale it, but it was, it's been expensive. I've really, I, it's been, it's been a lot to do and I've learned so much and I, I'm so grateful. I, you know, I think that, you know, I knew I, I was bringing a skill set that I knew better than anyone else. So, so that gives you a confidence. So I, I would say, I would recommend don't try something you've never done in an industry you've never gone in. Do bring something you're good at. We all, we all need help in this industry. We need people who are good at what they do. So I, I, that's, my, that's a first advice, but you know what I've really done? So, so having the knowledge behind you and that confidence is one. But what I've done since COVID, because it, it has been just so challenging, and I've started meditating. And I think it's kind of funny. Now I'm juicing, doing yoga and meditating. And I'm like, God, how did this happen to me? I'm, I'm becoming this hippie in my old age. Um, but I, um, meditating has been really important for me just to kind of stay, um, you know, uh, calm during difficult times. And if we can really, all of us should know, you know, the way our businesses look today versus five years, it should be completely different. It will be completely different. Life continues to change. And us humans don't like change that much. So we kind of like resist it. But if you kind of just let yourself go with it and you recognize that change is constant, you're going to go through change. It's how you navigate change that's going to make a difference in, in your success. And, and to have, for, for me, I always think if I, my goal is to make my clients successful. That is my bottom line. That's the goal of our company is whatever we can do to make our customers successful. That's our job. And we, we lead from that. And so all of our decisions are stemming from that. And so when we see their success, then we feel emboldened, empowered. And, and you know, that's, you, you have a belief in what you do, you know, realize that things are going to, they're going to shift, they're going to change. And, and, and you just got to ride it. Good advice. I agree. It's surfing, man. We're surfing the cannabis wave. Around. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, um, you know, there's this, and, and I'm horrible with numbers, and I don't often like to talk policy on here, but I'm curious, you know, we just got this new, I think I read it on um, Susan's page, about the, the new regulations for merchandise. Oh, and I am not, I, I saw that, and I haven't even looked at it uh, carefully, so I am not going to be able to comment on it, because I haven't okay. read it. And I apologize. No, no problem. I just thought it might be, it's very new. So it's not bad. It just came out the other day. So it's I saw, I, I saw it and I'm like, I got to get back to read that. But that was like earlier in the week and I have had it. Have you got it? No, it just seems like another erroneous policy, but that would impact the packaging. That, so we can no longer do it. You have to prove that it's 75% uh, adults to do any cannabis printing on merchandise. Is that what it is? Or can you tell me? I, I don't know. No, oh. I don't know. I was hoping you would know and, and, well, and that, have some solutions. <laughs> that was proposed a while ago. So I'll have to, I'll have to do a follow-up interview and I'll, I'll, uh, all right. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. What do you see happening in the next year around packaging in the cannabis industry? Well, um, I, I see packaging is very, very important. And, and because of the limited uh, ways of advertising and now it sounds like merch is, is part of it packaging is one of the few physical things that you can can actually 
the way you can get involved with your client, interact with your client is through your packaging. Um, about 70% of trust in a product is stemmed from the product packaging. I, I, I advise, I've had to advise people, they're, they're, I said, I have to ask them, I'm like, okay, so this is the container. They're saying, okay, I want a plastic tube for this container. And they're, they're, they want to be really eco-friendly. And, and I'm like, well, um, what is the, uh, and this is a very, very important bomb. And I'm like, well, what's, what are you going to sell it for? $50. I'm like, $50. And you're going to put it in a tiny little plastic tube. I said, nobody's going to buy it. They won't trust that it's worth $50. You know, so, I mean, you've got to make sure your, your packaging really uh, matches your product. I see in the next year, I, I would say I see in the next two years, um, the federal, uh, the feds somehow releasing what we've got going on. So it, I don't know if it's going to be safe banking act, but I see us be, you know, getting, getting legalized at the federal level, which will change the packaging landscape greatly. Um, as you know, right now you have to order different packaging for each state and da, da 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 Now this will take a while, but for them to legalize it, and then it'll probably take two years and then blah, blah, blah. But then you're going to have um, larger runs of packaging. You're going to have much more uh, uniformity out there. Um, so that's what I see going to be happening in packaging in the next couple of years. In the next year, we're going to be launching something that's going to help our small business communities. And, and, um, and we're really excited about that. It's something that we've needed to build for a long time, and we're finally doing it. Yay, I'm excited to see that. You know, I'm frustrated because I, I have a very high-end line that I want to put out, right? And my team actually, my design team actually did some of Coco Chanel's packaging. And it's frustrating for us because you know, we're also teaching with all of this and we want it to be eco-friendly. We want it to be glamorous at the same time. And it seems like there's such a big gap between those two. Do you see that coming together quickly? Oh, or? <laughs> that's, I mean, it's such a big question because everybody's worried about the environment and packaging has such an impact. So it's, it's been a huge topic of conversation in the packaging and print industries for a long, long time. Um, and then there's the big lie about what's actually being recycled. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we all feel good that we're putting things in the recycle bin, but maybe, what, 10% of that actually gets recycled. So it's, it's very, you know, it, once you realize kind of what happens down the chain, then you've got to go, okay, what can I really do to, you know, make sure I'm, I'm being a, a, a responsible business person, looking after the environment, doing my best. So, I mean, you know, there's different types of papers that you can use that, that the forest steward, you know, we would replant trees every time trees are taken down. So um, there's all these different types of inks that you can use, this and that. Um, glass is the, probably the most recycled item out there. So, um, so glass is, is probably one of the friendliest, but it's also very heavy. Um, and, you know, I can see, I'd love to see us doing, um, you know, I don't know if you've heard of loop packaging, but it's, it's, a, it's a new wave of packaging and, the, and they're starting in, in mainstream with like Procter and Gamble and that kind of thing, sort of like bringing back the milkman. And instead of so much temporary packaging, we have flower jars and then there's just some delivery that, that, that maybe we can use because there, there are products out there, but they're not really very beautiful, um, like the compostable or biodegradable bags. Well, those will biodegrade maybe before you want them to, and they don't protect the product. And so, I mean, but if it's a short term, just send out, then, you know, then, and, and then they refill their permanent containers. So a, a lot of companies, it, it's pretty kind of exciting what they're doing. Um, I believe Canopy Growth up in uh, Canada it has got a loop program going on, a recycling program going on that's pretty exciting. It costs a lot of money um, to first they have to buy the packaging and make sure it's it, it fits these these regulations, and then they have to pay for the recycling of it. So it's a very expensive program, but they're they're one of the leaders in our industry for sure for recycled packaging. So you guys can check that. That Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we out here, we kind of had, we used to do that 
you know, with a lot of our goods, you could go, you go to the co-op and you refill and refill and refill. And it has been a frustration because, I mean, I would take my glasses all back to the dispensary if I thought it would do any good, you know? Well, and then now is the, 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 the touching and the feel and, and everything. So now with COVID, it's just like that you, you're kind of in a rock but in a hard place. I can see first the industry is going to you know, kind of move along and, and, and get a little more standardized. Uh, we're going to probably, uh, you know, get approved at the federal level. People will be buying businesses. Businesses will be merging. There'll be fewer and fewer small businesses. But if, if, if you know, if I can see eventually we'll have people now growing at home, like people are doing micro brews and they'll be growing at home and they're going to want to go to a farmer's market and sell their products and make brownies and make cool stuff or give it or give it away at a wedding or whatever and they're going to need small run packaging so we're, I'm excited that the, I think that the small business community has a place in this industry it will continue but but big business is going to come in and there's going to hopefully be room for those crafts craftsmen and women that that w will bring beautiful products and small farm batch farm well I think if you just look at consumerism historically that small, special, elite, exclusive, can't get anywhere else is very much appreciated by the consumer. We just, like you said before we got on here, you said we're just babies, we're growing or something like that. And, and it, that really is what it is, is all anybody I think who's in the game right now is a pioneer. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. we're just, we're learning. Well, and this new regulated market is tricky to navigate, you know, uh, and it is for, for everyone. And, uh, you know, it's, it's I, I'm looking forward to California, hopefully fixing some of these regulations because my God, what is it? Is it 85% of all cannabis bought in California's black market, right? No. I mean, isn't that the truth? And, and it, they've just, the, the regulators have made it so far out of reach for people and have overtaxed it. And then the consumer's like, why do I have to go to a dispensary and pay double? And they're like, well, I have to charge you, <laughs> you know, because so the system is broken. They've just overtaxed it and I think overregulated it and pushed people out. They made a legal culture, our 215 culture, a legal industry in California illegal. Well, is really my opinion. Well, and 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 that's the truth. And and it, I mean, it's just, they made it so difficult. And I, I so that breaks my heart, you know. So I do I look at legalization at the federal level as something that will help? I don't know. I don't know, but it could. But it, it, it could. Um, it something's definitely got to shift. Yeah. You know, um, and, and they put a lot of onus. Now, why are some states allow a, a cultivator just to walk into a dispensary with a turkey bag and, and be able to sell that? And then the dispensary can, you know, now they, they can't do that uh, in California. It's got to be packaged and branded, which is a lot on a, a, a farmer who has never had any experience with that. It's expensive and you don't want to make a mistake. And, you know, how do you build a brand? You've got to start. I mean, it's, it's a lot. And they put a lot on the industry real quick, and it made it it made it just too difficult. Well, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people meeting the expectations they had, so that gives me great hope for change. Yes, <laughs> we just, we just yeah. have to voice it, you know. And and a lot of us are now on the same page too, you know, because the taxes aren't coming in, the corporations are collapsing, you know. Um, it's just it's a well, and we had. Uh, the, in, in, the, there are a lot of things that, that happened. They, a lot of people got a bunch of money that maybe didn't know what they were doing and, and was tr they were trying to buy market share rather than, than just serve a customer need. And uh, the reason you come in, uh, uh, it's been said that the, the companies in the U.S. Are, are faring much better than the companies in Canada because they're having to be much more competitive. The, Canadi the Canadian companies, because they had access to capital, because they're public and they're federally, um, you know, regulated, they, they had access to capital that we just don't have here. And they were given a lot of money that maybe they shouldn't have. And the Canadian market is the same size as the market of California. So it's, it, it's, and that's an entire country. So, you know, it's just, it, it's going to take time and, 
you know, I think as a community, it's hard to get us to agree on how things should be regulated. So I think it's important for us all to come together and build consensus so we can speak as one voice so that the regulators are going to be looking uh, to us to tell them, how do we do this? What's the best way? What are our best practices? What do you guys see? You know, what, what do you, does flour need to be in a child resistant jar? Right. You know, does it, do we need to have an exit bag with more plastic if the primary package is child resistant? What if a child gets into, can they really get sick on? Yes, edibles for sure. But should we look at the other categories so we are not over packaging things? And, and we're not over regulating things, you know? So as an industry, we all need to come together. That's all I'm saying. I agree. It's the key word together, you know? Yes. It's, it's been, we, we, we have our highs and our lows, but I think COVID and being an essential is really helping us come back together. It um, is. And I'm seeing more collaboration and more large opportunities and exciting, people are excited. And, and, and the hemp and CBD industry is our sister, uh, uh, industry and I love uh, the work that's been being done there so I just saw hemp straws out which I I love a straw I don't, <laughs> so I, I was glad that's to see great. hemp straws that's great so any any advice that you have for um, a woman who such as yourself decided to come into the industry with all her expertise at this point in time what would be your key key piece of advice for, for a woman in that situation? Um, I would just say just uh, take a, a little while to learn the industry because there, there's nuances and there's needs that if you're a successful person here may not be quite the same. So really take your time and learn the industry and, and then figure out how your particular skill set could, could fit. It might be a little different than you know, if you can take a little time, get in, you know, get involved, the, get, go to some, some events and start meeting people. And, and, and I think it will, it will come unless you're real, real strong about what you have, but get to know, you know, take the time um, and, and be willing to pivot because what you did in mainstream doesn't necessarily work. So you're going to have to reimagine it. I've had to reimagine the entire process for the cannabis industry because what I did in mainstream did not work at all. Mm. And what about from your perspective, if, if you were just meeting someone who's been growing through 215 or, or had an edible through 215 or something like that and is, is going, okay, I need to engage in the legitimate market. Well, you know, it, it, it is so difficult. So, I mean, from, you know, getting, getting your license and that, that's the big hurdle, you know, and it's very expensive, but maybe teaming up with people because when, when, when you're doing it on your own, you know, you, you, I think there's a, but there's, there's strength in numbers, you know, especially from this community and people who have such knowledge and they have passion. So if you can come together with, with other people in your network that maybe here's somebody who's actually good at doing numbers and here's somebody who's really good at creative or, Here's someone who's good with our, you know, everybody's got to be good with your product, but they got to bring other skills that are going to round you out well to be a successful business and start taking business courses, you know, because what's lacking in, in the industry is a lack of knowledge of how things work and what, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. I mean, if, if, you, if you have time now or while you're thinking about it, you know, you can take a business startup courses. I, I, I'm not sure what those are, but. For me, I've been in business my whole life, and so it felt like a natural transition. But what I see people needing is, or, or make sure you're teaming up with people who are going to lead you through the process, and 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 you have really good suppliers, you know. So you could, if you had time to take courses, that's great. But have good people who will educate you as you go, because it's it's tough learning how to build a brand, how to market a brand, how you know, um, what, how, what's social media? What should you be doing on social media? A lot of people make mistakes on social media. All they would do is put out pictures of their, their nugs. And that's, that's kind of nice. Okay. But that doesn't really engage the audience. What I'd want to see is a picture of the farm with your dog and you running and, or, you know, whatever. I want to see the, the beauty of this, the nature. I, I want to see who 
you are and what what means what do, what do things mean to you so you know it's it's tough uh so i would say just you know get get with other people who you fit well and that you would wouldn't mind being married to as a group because you're going to be married and uh but but that will bring strength each person would bring a, 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 a some some sort of strength and then rely on on good people um triple interview several people before making a decision you know all those regular business practices um but but you just start dotting every i crossing every t yeah that's a really difficult thing i am not i'm i'm I, I'm not a lot of those things that you've mentioned. I've been on a crash course. I think a lot of us have been on a crash course for the past four or five years. Yeah. Um, and it's the whole dotting of the I's and the T's thing from, from folks coming from this experience is very intense because we had to burn. You know, yes. I had a note uh -huh. of my grow and how I built it and all my steps. And when I got blackmailed, I had to burn all of that, you know, uh -huh. to be scared, right? You don't yeah. keep this. So it's, it's, it's just this mind. It is. Um, and what I've learned is to kind of let go of it and, and do exactly what you said, is you really, you find people who are better than you that believe in your vision, you know, um, and build a good team. Yeah. I mean, I could not do what I'm doing without my team. I'm so proud of them. My, my business partner is Julia, who, who you know, and she brings a lot. You know, she's, she's the operations side. I cannot stand all the little paperwork. I cannot stand taking care of payroll. I can't. I'm like, I, uh, I'm, I'm doing marketing. I'm doing, you know, our, our building out our future, or planning for this and that, and, and, and sales and, and, and handling some of our larger accounts and stuff. So I, it's been, it's been really a fun, a, a fun journey. And I, I, my, my team is great. And, uh, our production team and our, we've got sales people and we've got great, great, great people. Nice. Um, with harvest coming up in COVID here, it seems like it's not really going to switch really fast. Um, what kind of adv advice do you have for women in the supply chain to navigate packaging and getting to market this year? Well, I mean, um, I think that, that uh, you know, start early, you know, just start figuring out if, if, what, what the, the good thing is that you can do is plan. Um, and and you, you probably know, okay, I am going to get, I'm going to net probably between, you know, 50 and 100 pounds or whatever it is, whatever you're going to. And, and then of that, I am going to put the priority of that into eight you know, if you're going to right to market, right? And how many eights do I need? So projecting those out, planning for that, saying, okay, I know that I'm gonna need this probably come August, if you, to be safe, September maybe at the latest, but you're gonna want it. So everybody's gonna want it right at the same time. So you kind of got to know what you want, uh, do your shopping around now, figure out who your supplier is, and then say, and say, I've got, Da 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 da. That I'm going to need at X and X time. You know, between X and X time, and then then you can go. You know, and then that way you're they're kind of ready for you. You're not stuck at the last minute. You're you've got jar labels that have already. You've got your pre-approved jar, and you've got your jar labels already set out. You've got the the template ready. Maybe you've even got them designed. So now you're ready to go. You just got to be ready to go. Planning is is key. Yeah, I, 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 that's the part I, I agree with that. You gotta, I call it strategy. You gotta have your strategy laid out before you. Implement. Well, you're gonna know if you're, if you're growing, you're gonna see how well your plants are doing and say, I'm gonna probably get between this and this. So that means I, I, I'm gonna do primarily eights, but maybe I wanna do some pre rolls. So then you say, I, I'm gonna do X amount of this and X amount. So then you start your planning. Okay, what's my pre roll package gonna look like? Blah, 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 blah. Get everything ready, kind of get it all planned out, get your templates ready, your design ready. And that way when it's done and it's fresh and everybody's, you can just, you're ready to roll. Yeah. And you know how much it's gonna cost, you know? Right, right, right. Uh, do, can you put in pre-orders so you're ready to go? You're like in line? Yeah, for sure. 
and and um, uh, and we're actually going to be doing a special program for you guys with some beautiful new jars. So uh, I'm I'm gonna Rachel. I'm telling Rachel about it because it's something that's just coming up. So I'm like, we need to get this, and we're just putting it together. So um, for for eight jars, they're from Germany. They're beautiful, 58% recycled. You know, so we're gonna we're gonna have a like a little program set up so that, oh, that we nice. can respond. We're putting it together now. I am in love with her little women empowered design campaign that she I see on her social media right now. She uh, that that woman in the whole Japanese garb and the machine gun. Oh, I'm gonna have to. I haven't even seen that. I'm gonna have to see that. It's so cool. I want a T-shirt and a poster. <laughs> oh my God! I'm gonna tell her. She's gonna be thrilled. Oh, it's pretty awesome. Well, Yay. It's been a pleasure, Carrie. Are there any last words you want to say to folks oh. watching and who will watch later on? Thank you. I mean, I've, lo I've loved this industry. I've loved it ever since I walked into MJ BizCon in 2015. And we've been through hell. We have been through hell with the, uh, the legalization in the California market and that transition. And then the bait crisis and now COVID. I mean, we have walked through hell. And so my advice is when you're in that place, just keep walking. You're gonna get through it, okay? Just keep going. Um, and, and realize that we've been through a hard, hard time. We're used to being through a hard time. We're used to living through it and getting to the other side. So just have, be strong. You're gonna get through this. Band together. There are strength in numbers, but be careful who, who you partner with. And I can't wait to see you guys when this world opens up again. I'm just so excited to get back to events. Man, I was so burned out on events by... Oh, I was exhausted. And I'm like, I'm getting so much done. But I do miss seeing my, my people. This is my I, tribe. I miss them know? now. I wasn't missing yeah. now. I'm missing them. So I, yeah. I can't wait either. I can't wait to see them. It's been long people. enough. I know. I don't know when it's going to happen. But I'm so excited when it does. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Well, thank you. And where can everybody find you if they want to reach out and talk about yeah. packaging? Just, uh, you can email me at Kary, K-A-R-Y, at hippopackaging.com. So email me there. We're, we're actually doing a um, free packaging analysis. If you want us to look at your current packaging and make suggestions for helping you stand out better on shelf, um, we'll have a process in place for that. But just please reach out if we can help. We'd love to. All right. Well, you're going to be talking to us again soon. Um, yes, I would love to, Lele. I've just loved our time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carrie. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and thank you for joining us on a Sunday. Thank you. Okay, bye.